So my goal tonight is to try and mount my junction box beneath this inverter. The conduits from both inverters will run into the junction box and from there the conduit will go out into the two separate panels over here. If I have enough time tonight, I'm going to try and run the four gauge line from this inverter down into the junction box and over to this main output panel. But we'll see if time allows for that. So something I didn't think about until I started editing this video was I actually completed the 12 to 48 volt conversion. I'm to the point now that I'm exactly where I was before I started the conversion project. Now we can move forward and continue to progress on trying to move the house off grid. So I didn't film this because to be honest, I had to redo it three times. So I'm kind of hoping third time's the charm, but I bought, uh, this is the third size junction box that I had to buy. The first size was a four by four by two inches deep, which was too shallow. And then I purchased a four by four by four inches deep, which was again, uh, not necessarily too shallow, but the conduit couplings ended up sitting way too close together so you couldn't put some in from the top and from the sides so today i picked up yet a third junction box and i'm hoping and praying that this one actually works um so far it looks like it should so it's going to actually sit on the wall obviously it's going to slide down because this conduit beneath won't be there but it'll sit on the wall just like that and then the lines from over here will run down into it. From above, it'll run down into it. And then we will uh, run them out over here to the panels next to it. So something else that I didn't film yesterday, just because it was a lot of tedious work and it's, it's really boring to actually film and I don't really need it for my own record purposes. Um, but to know that I did it. So you see the inverters on this wall here. If I turn around all the way on the opposite wall, we have one of our panels. And right now this panel has a lot of my, my 220 loads in it, excuse me, 240 loads in it. And I had to move, um, I had to move my range load into this panel. This panel is not gonna be hooked up to my solar system at this time. So all my 240 loads are in this panel. The panel that's in my office, which when we get to the point of actually hooking up the AC output from these inverters, I'll show you that. But uh, that panel now is strictly 120 loads. So that should be a cakewalk uh, for these inverters to be able to run that panel. So in order to get started tonight, like I said, I need to mount this box right over here beneath this inverter. And to do that, that means, yes, more concrete drilling. So to save you all from that, I wish this really worked for me, but at least it'll work for you guys. All right, I'm glad that's done. All the noise and everything. I don't have enough of these uh, fittings right here. Uh, this, the store was out of them, so I only have seven of them. Otherwise, I would have done both of these here right now and saved myself a little bit of trouble. But uh, for my own reference, when I go to put this next one in, uh, probably two and a quarter inches is what I'm going to need. We'll have to power everything down, disconnect our lines from our panel over here so that we can pull them back through, get our proper length, and then trim our conduit right back here, feed through the junction box to go over up to the panel. Now we're getting to the point to where 
it's easier to see what I was talking about. So we're gonna have two conduits coming down. The one on the right is going to be the output. The one on the left will be the input. And they're gonna come over here into this junction box. Input will be on top, output on the bottom. Um, but in order for them to go into the proper order for the two panels over here, we will have to switch which one is on top and which one is on the bottom in this box. So in this box, our input is gonna go down to the bottom, output conduit right here. And then the output for power is gonna end up coming up and going out this way. And that's because the orientation of the panels over here, the closest panel to the inverter is the AC output. And then the one next to it is the AC input. So the output is gonna come from here over and up. The input is gonna go right underneath that output conduit and come over and then go up into that panel on the left. All right, I got the wire all pulled back out through. Now I can measure out properly, put my fitting down here and actually get the proper curve in place. Trim the one inch conduit so that it'll come right into here. And then I'll use the other side of the conduit as my out from up above and go over to the panel. So this is inverter two. I've got the red phase two line, ground and neutral. Goes down into the conduit. And from the conduit, it goes over up into the panel. And then in my inverter phase one, black is my phase one. Then I've got my neutral and ground. They come down into this box and you can see they go over in the same conduit and up into the 
electrical box, uh, neutral or neutral bar, ground to ground bar, black to phase one, and red to phase two. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about uh, this crisscrossing right now in this box. Uh, it's it's going to be up in the air right now because it's very tight to work with. Um, I might just see if there's some way that I can just run the two conduits over to here and then double stack, um, stagger them, inverter two going behind, inverter one coming out front, and then coming over here and then having two conduits going into this box and then two coming into this one here. Um, because it's kind of late right now, I'm, I'm going to leave it as is and just see how it works. Um, now, because I have officially hooked up phase one and phase two on this breaker, now, uh, so phase one and phase two, this is my main breaker. Uh, this breaker here, this double pole 60 amp breaker is going to be my output going to my panel. That's not going to be hooked up right now. But I still have these two breakers here. And in order for them both to be powered, that means that I need to hook both of these inverters up into split phase mode. Excuse me. Hook these inverters up into split phase mode. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I have not powered on this inverter yet. Uh, or programmed it or anything. So I need to get that set up and get it into split phase mode. Uh, I have to look and see what the instructions say. I believe it's it's just one of the menu settings, but should be interesting. It'd be kind of nice to have the ability for 240, even though I'm not going to be using 240 at the moment. Thank you, Ian. Oh. How'd that start up? Because it hit the button to turn it on. Something that's going to cause this to possibly spark big time. Big time? Oh, I have to see this. Yeah, sparks are not good though. Sparks are actually shorts. When I do this, I put gloves on because I don't want it to spark on me. All right, I don't like the sparks. Like that. Come on, Dad, you're not even ten minutes into the video and you're already blowing stuff up. Yep. You gotta finish the intro first. Well, stink. What? I have to take off these little panels, and they're very hard to get at. I should have done it a while ago. forgot to do was to take off this get the camera up there there's a tiny little plate back here behind the 
uh, conduit fittings that's required for split phase mode. So I have a tiny little screwdriver. I got this one little plate off over here. Um, you can see there's uh, the left side, I believe, is power sensing. Um, and then the right side is parallel communication. There's there's two connections. So I'll have to get that off on this one as well. And then uh, run the two serial cables together. All right, I've got the face plates off on both of these. And just a note, if you're planning on putting these in split phase, uh, do yourself a big favor and take those panel covers off before you even mount these things on the wall. All right, so looking at the manual, um, page 55, uh, one inverter in each phase, you can see P1, P2, uh, the bottom picture, communication connection. So on P1, phase one, the outside serial cable goes to the outside of P2 and the inside serial cable goes to the inside of P2. up here later once I'm making sure everything works. Gotta figure out which 18. There it is. Turn the beeping off. Now you see the speaker icon is turned off. All right, setting 28 is the setting that I need, and it is only available when the inverter is in standby mode. So I have to turn off the inverter right now. You see the blue light. It's actually inverting, putting out 120 volts. I need to actually get out of this mode, but I have to do this quickly. So I need to get to mode 28, and then I need to change this to 2P1. So, I'll turn this off. Quickly get to 28. Enter. Two P one. Escape. turned off just that fast. All right, so that's out. Turn it off. Settings. Twenty-eight. Enter. This one will be two P two. Enter. back out and it'll turn off all right Ian wanted to help out and so I believe we have everything set up right for split phase between the two inverters communication change the uh, communication protocol to 2p1 and 2p2 and he wants to turn them on so Let's find out if we did it right. So Ian, go ahead and turn on both inverters at the same time. All right. Now if we come over here 
then we look at this inverter it says 2p1 in the top left output in 120 volts we, yep and we come over to this one and it says 2p2 output in 120 volts all right now let's put a voltmeter on the panel and make sure everything's hooked up right there's no easy way to hold this either all right phase one and neutral 120 volts phase two neutral 119.32 and phase one and phase two 207 Something's not set up right. All right, so with Ian's help, we were able to finally get uh, the inverters set up in split phase mode. You can see both of them are outputting battery power right now. Uh, the breakers are all turned on and we have power at our outlets and back at the laundry room. So for tonight, I think that's all I'm gonna work on. I still need to decide what I really wanna do with these wires here in this box because uh, it's, I'm trying to cram an awful lot of stuff into this one conduit and I don't know that I'm gonna like that too much. So I, I kinda wanna sleep on it um, if you happen to watch this and have any ideas about possibly how to combine neutrals and grounds in this box so I don't have to send them all back over to uh, the output breaker box, uh, let me know. I did consider the idea and I'm still toying around with um, buying the separate little bus bars for the uh, ground connections and putting them inside this box and then have one for my grounds and one for my neutrals and just combine everything in here as opposed to having to send it down. That would free up uh, two, two wires per conduit having to go over. So. Like I said, I'm gonna sleep on it and see where it takes me. Um, but for now, we got a split phase going. So I think that's a great spot to end tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll catch up with y'all next time.